Hey, what's up guys? So let's take a look at the Nerd QX line of home Bitcoin miners. Now the Nerd QX line is essentially an upgraded version of the single chip open source Bitax miner. However, instead of having just one ASIC here mining, you now get four different chips, hence the name Nerd QX or Quad X. Additionally, there's also gonna be an upgraded display here compared to the original Bitaxes too. And here on hand, I've got three different variants of the different Nerd Q-axes with different chips under the hood, as well as different cooling systems. And in this video, let's take a look at the differences here between the different versions of the Nerd Q-axes, the pros and cons of the different variants, and help you decide which version is best for you. And to do this, we're gonna take a look at the different designs and features of the different miners. We'll take a look at the different temperatures based on the different cooling systems. And we're gonna take a look at the volume levels based on how many fans you have, or if you're going with air-cooled versus water-cooled. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at three different variants here of the Nerd QX series miners. We've got one water-cooled miner. This is the Nerd QX Plus Hydro. And then we have two air-cooled miners, and these are both different versions of the Nerd QX Plus Plus. Now, in terms of hash rate, this Nerd QX Plus uses four different BM1368 chips, the same chip that's used in the Bidax Supra, and so this is gonna give you a hash rate of about two and a half terahash per second. Now, the Nerd QX++ is gonna nearly double the hash rate because it uses four different BM1370 chips that are used in the Bidax Gamma. And so for that reason, at stock settings, instead of getting around two and a half terahash per second, you're gonna get closer to 4.9 terahash per second. Furthermore, there's different hardware versions of the Nerd QX++ miners. This is gonna be one of the older designs, while this is gonna be the newer Revision 6. And we'll go over some of the improvements here in just a moment. Now, taking a look at the cooling systems with the uh, Nerd QX Plus Hydro, you can see we've got the water block right here instead of a big cooling fan. However, it does still have some fans. If we uh, flip it around to the back side, you can see that right here for the radiator, there's gonna be uh, one fan right there to keep it cool. And there's also a second fan here, uh, whoops, did I just unplug it? <laughs> for the uh, cooling the ASICs on the bottom of the miner. Here, I'll go ahead and uh, plug it back in and get it up and running. Uh, there's also a cool trick with the uh, backside fan. Uh, if you're running at a kind of lower hash rate, you can actually pull this top uh, fan connector like this and disconnect that fan on the back to keep it a little bit quieter without running into overheating issues. And I'll also cover maybe some uh, volume level comparisons here between water-cooled and air-cooled uh, later on in this video too. For now, we'll go ahead and plug that back in. And taking a closer look here at the two different Nerd QX++ pluses, there's actually some really nice improvements here between the original version and the newer Revision 6. Here's a look at all of the different changes and improvements here with the newer version. But as far as some of the biggest ones that I've noticed, number one, we've got a new power connector. So instead of a barrel connector here, we now have an XT30 power input, which is gonna allow us to bump instead of from just eight amps max up to 15. Now this power connector is actually gonna be just about maxed out even at stock settings. So if you wanna get into overclocking or anything, you're definitely gonna want the newer power connector with more headroom. Additionally, there is a fuse uh, in line right there that has been removed on the newer Revision 6, which is gonna give you more headroom. And so if you wanna push it, again, you've got more headroom here on the newer one, but you just wanna make sure that you've got the fuse installed in the power power supply instead of on the board itself. Uh, there's also gonna be some improvements to the trace layout, which helps to reduce the temperatures in the board, and we'll get into temperatures here in just a moment. But one of the uh, most practical differences is if you take a look here, you can see some heat sinks that are installed in the voltage regulator that you don't see here on this specific Revision 6. Now, you can always install uh, heat sinks on this one as well, but nevertheless, I actually find that we get uh, lower temperatures on the voltage regulator here on the Revision 6, despite the fact that there's no heat sinks like there is here on the older version. Now, obviously due to the silicone lottery, there's gonna be some variances from one model to the next, but nevertheless, that is a surprising change. They've also relocated the temperature sensors that monitor the ASICs back behind the heat sink and fan here, so those readings are gonna be more accurate, and there's been some improvements to efficiency as well uh, with the new Revision 6. Now with respect to overclocking though, I'm gonna have a follow-up video going over some of the options for upgraded heat sinks and fans and power supplies and adapters to connect everything. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date as new videos go live. In this video though, we're gonna focus on some of the stock settings here for both the water-cooled and air-cooled systems. Now there's a bunch of different people who make miners like this. Both of these miners here, the Nerd QX Plus Hydro and the QX Plus Plus Revision 6 were provided by Solo Satoshi. While 
while the other nerd QX++ was provided by Bitcoin Merch. And I'll have links here to all the different miners down in the description below. Now, some companies sell optional rear fans here for your Nerd QX++, and they're designed to help cool the backside of the four different ASICs that are doing all the hashing. Now, this is an optional fan. You don't need it, and it actually does a good job even without this rear fan. But there are some benefits that I find to cooling the backside of the ASICs uh, if you add this optional fan. And I'll talk about that kind of stuff as we start getting into some of the uh, temperature testing for these different miners. Next, let's take a look at the different temperatures and volume levels of the different miners based on what cooling system they have and how many fans that we're running. Now, for the NerdQX Plus Hydro, it's got a back fan which we can turn on and off, so we're gonna see how that impacts both temperature and volume. We also wanna take a look at the differences, of course, between the hydro and the air-cooled system. It's not gonna be an exact comparison because, well, we've got the NerdQX Plus Hydro, and then I have the Plus Plus air-cooled. However, I can still get a sense of just running different fan speeds, and we'll definitely be taking a look at that. Additionally, with the Nerd QX++, the Revision 6 tends to run cooler, which is gonna help with uh, keeping the fan speed down. And we also have that optional rear fan that we can see how much that makes a difference for, both in terms of temperature and volume as well. And for all these different miners, I'm gonna be testing it in a couple different ways. Number one, I wanna set the fan controls to automatic with having them set to keep the miner at 60 degrees. So the max temperature for either the ASIC or the voltage regulator. And then to keep things extra quiet, I can disable the rear fan when applicable, or for maximum cooling, I can have uh, all the fans going and just crank everything up to 100% full power and see how much cooler and how much louder the miners are. And then to measure the different volume levels, I just used a sound meter here like this that I had set up one meter from each of the different miners. And then one at a time, I would test it with uh, different fan configurations or different fan speeds, and then just jot down the volume level here in dBA. And starting off here first with the Nerd QX Plus Hydro, the baseline is gonna be with the fan set to auto with the uh, max temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. And at this level, it was only running the fans at 15% of max speed because it's, well, really relying on the hydro cooling instead of the air cooling. And at this level, the ASIC was running at 49.9 degrees Celsius and the voltage regulators were at 46.9. So never even reaching that 60 degrees Celsius threshold. Now, if I unplug the rear fan to make it even quieter, the ASIC temperature didn't really change all that much. It actually dropped slightly, which was kind of surprising, but the voltage regulator temperatures actually climbed by nearly 10 degrees Celsius. Now, on the maximum cooling side, with both fans plugged in and running at 100%, the ASIC temperature drops by almost four degrees Celsius, and the voltage regulator temperature drops by uh, not even two degrees Celsius. And so jumping from 15% to 100%, only makes a small difference in terms of added cooling because we're mostly relying on the hydro cooling instead of on the air cooling. Now, in terms of volume levels though, there is a big difference here with the different fans. Now with the baseline, with both fans set to auto and running at 15%, I measured 39.3 dBA, which is basically like a background hum. And then when I unplugged the rear fan, the volume dropped to 35.8 dBA, which is virtually silent. And so it seems like the rear fan is actually what's generating the most amount of noise. Uh, and actually that 35.8 decibels, I should note, is kind of like the baseline volume here, like the quietest level that I can measure here in my room, even with like the AC turned off and no other miners going or anything. So it may be quieter than that. But in practice, it's virtually silent with the main fan at 15% and the rear fan disabled. On the other hand, when I've got both fans running and maxed out at 100%, the volume level climbs to 47.3 dBA, and at this level, you can definitely hear the fan going pretty strongly. Next, if we take a look at the Nerd QX++, specifically the older design that only has one single front fan, when I set the fan speed to auto with a 60 degrees Celsius max, the fans actually crank up to 82% of max speed instead of just 15%, because again, we're relying on the fans instead of the water cooling. And you can see how in this case, it's the voltage regulators that are first hitting the 60 degrees Celsius threshold. And so that's actually what's kicking the fans up to this speed. Now for maximum cooling, I manually set the fan to a hundred percent speed and the temperatures did come down slightly. It was about a degree and a half Celsius on the ASIC and three degrees on the voltage regulator. And for fun, I also tried dropping the fan speed down to 15% like I did with the Nerd QX Plus Hydro but quickly it overheated <laughs> and the whole thing shut down on me. And so it's not practical to run uh, the Nerd QX++ with the fans here at 15% fan speed. Next, if we take a look at the volume levels, starting off here first with the baseline with the fan set to auto and at 82%, 
It measured at 39.3 dBA, which is actually the same volume of the Hydro uh, with its fans set to just 15%. And at this volume level, it's again like a background hum. And then if I crank the fans up to 100% speed, the volume level goes up to 41.8 dBA, and at this level, the fan definitely becomes more noticeable. Though surprisingly, it's still quieter and less annoying than the Hydro at 100% fan speed. And remember, the Hydro was running at 47.3 dB, which is 5.5 dB louder than the air-cooled version with the single fan. Next, let's take a look at the other air-cooled version of the Nerd QX++, but specifically now the Revision 6. And again, this one has a couple key differences. Number one, due to the improved design, it's gonna natively run cooler, especially the voltage regulators, and so the fans are not actually gonna have to work as hard, which helps to keep the fan speed lower and the volume lower. Additionally, this one has the option of a second rear fan as well, and so I wanted to test not only with just the main front fan, but also the second rear fan to see kind of what the differences are. And starting off here again with our baseline of the fan set to auto with a 60 degrees Celsius max, because the voltage regulators run so much cooler, this time around it's actually the ASICs that wind up hitting that 60 degrees Celsius max first. However, because everything runs cooler, the fans are only running at 60% of max speed instead of 82. And then testing with the rear fan plugged in, because we have the extra fan helping with the cooling, both fans can run at now just 50% of max speed, and we see the temperature of the voltage regulators drop by an additional 6 degrees Celsius. Then if we crank things up to 100% of max fan speed, taking a look at the front only fan, the ASIC temperature drops by about five degrees Celsius and the voltage regulators drop by about six degrees Celsius. And then once we plug in that rear fan again, the ASIC temps drop by about two degrees Celsius while the voltage regulator temps drop by about seven and a half degrees Celsius. And then like before, for fun, I tried setting the fans to 15% speed, just like I had with the Nerd QX Plus Hydro. But like with the other version of the Nerd QX Plus Plus, the temperatures of the version six started climbing quickly. And then within a minute or so, the V6 also overheated and went into shutdown mode too. Then as far as our different volume levels, taking a look at our baseline of auto and 60 degrees Celsius, it measured 37.8 dBA, which is quieter than not only the other Nerd QX++, but also the Hydro as well. And that's a result that I honestly wasn't expecting. It would make sense for it to be quieter than the other Nerd QX++ because the fan speed dropped from 82% to just 60. But the Hydro, I mean, it's got the big fan on the back, but it's still producing some volume nonetheless. And subjectively, the Plus Plus V6 sounds like a gentle whisper when it's running at this volume level. And then once we add the rear fan, the fan speeds drop from 60% down to just 50. And so despite the fact that we've added a second fan here, the overall volume level drops by 2 dBA. And it definitely helps that that rear Noctua is so quiet too. Uh, in practice, with both fans running at 50% volume, I can barely hear them running like when I'm sitting at my desk. I have to like kind of turn everything else off here in my office to have things really quiet and get pretty close to it. And so that makes it a very practical setup to run even here inside of my office and I don't have to go throw it in another room or out in the garage or something. Now that said, if I crank the fans up to 100% speed, with just the single fan, the volume jumps from 37.8 to 42.9 dBA or an increase of 5 dBA. And then adding the rear fan bumps the overall volume by an additional decibel. And in practice, this makes it much louder, more annoying, and obviously more noticeable to the point where I would not want to run it at 100% here uh, sitting in my office. And so with all this in mind, what are some of the main takeaways? Well, when it comes to the different Nerd QX++ versions, I think the Revision 6 is a very nice change. With the improved design of the PCBs, the voltage regulators now run much cooler, which allows the whole system to natively run cooler. That means you don't have to work the fans as hard, they can run at lower speeds, and uh, it helps to keep the whole system quieter overall. And if you wanna get into any sort of overclocking, which we're gonna be doing here in an upcoming video, well, now you've got more headroom because it's already running natively cooler. It's got an upgraded power connector, which is gonna allow you to pull a lot more power when you get into overclocking. Plus, because it's more efficient, now you're getting more hash rate for the same amount of power or less power draw for the same amount of hash rate. And then comparing the hydro cooling for the air cooling, again, it's not an apples to apples test because I do have uh, different versions of the Nerd QX miners that I'm testing with. However, there doesn't seem to be as much of an advantage with the hydro cooled system as I was expecting. It does have a much bigger fan on the back and it allows it to run at lower speeds because of the fact that you've got that water block covering the ASICs and the water block is doing the majority of the cooling. However, that fan back there is still kind of noticeable, so it's not gonna be as quiet as I was expecting compared to the air cooling 
cooled versions. Now the Hydro does have some other advantages like it can light up in different colors and whatnot, and that's certainly cool. Plus, it's certainly conceivable that if you wanna get into overclocking, you might have more headroom with uh, water cooling compared to air cooling. And again, that's kind of something I want to play with. I've got some additional heat sinks that have been arriving, uh, different fans and different sizes, uh, upgraded power supplies, etc. So I'm going to be getting more into that. But as far as just like the stock settings here, I think the main benefit of the hydros, I guess, is just kind of like the cool design and the LEDs and whatnot. Volume levels were pretty similar at stock settings. Additionally, when cranking the fan speed up to 100%, it was also the air-cooled version that was quieter than the hydro version. And so for these reasons, I would actually say that my favorite version of the Nerd QX mining series is gonna be the Nerd QX++ air-cooled, as far as giving me the best balance of hash rate for the dollar, as well as its native cooling features and its volume levels. Now, there are people who are now building Nerd QX++ hydros, and those are available for order. And down in the video description, I'm gonna be linking to all of the different variants of these home miners that I've been talking about in these videos. And if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. And if you'd like to stay up to date as new videos continue to come out all about uh, Bitcoin tech and Bitcoin home mining, make sure you hit the uh, subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you can uh, get notified as new videos go live. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you're all doing great, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.